so what we have is a r dot a free radical and x minus a halide ion now this will be very stable chloride bromide iodide ions are very stable this will be a spectator ion meaning they will not participate in the reaction somewhere in the system it will be just it will settle down and watch what's happening now this r dot i'll tell you one thing this r dot could have been r minus as well suppose this antibonding gains one more electron if it gains one more electron depending upon the density of the charge available outside it will gain electrons suppose the density outside is very high i have put huge amount of sodium metal then the electron coming out of that sodium metal chip will be very high then there is a possibility that instead of gaining one electron it may gain two electron so if it gains two electron uh, instead of r dot will have r minus so just bear in that mind but this is more established more authentic mechanism that we accepts one electron at a time and forms r dot now from here the the path you know what happens next if you have a r dot two r dot will dimerize to give you r r this is a known path right and this is the final organic product we are interested in right and this x minus will combine with any plus from here you'll have any x so this is the final product but suppose we go the other way suppose instead of r dot we would have r minus then what would have been the mechanism we have to think about it what this r minus can do looking at what else in the system there is some rx there will be some rx which will be unreacted right so a simple sn2 will operate this r minus will act as a nucleophile from the front end x minus will come out and again you will have r r the same product as here so whatever the reaction be be it's a anionic mechanism or be it's a mechanism via free radical the final product will be r r now depending upon the temperature depending upon reaction condition depending upon the electronic pressure either it will be a free radical or it will be a anion fine but the final product nevertheless will be the same in both the cases so this is wood's reaction and what you have to observe what is the reactant it's alkyl halide that halide can be chloride bromide or iodide it will not be fluoride the reagent here is sodium metal reaction would be something different if you take magnesium metal if you take magnesium metal as we have seen previously that will give us grignard reagent when we studied grignard reagent we studied its preparation instead of sodium if we take copper here then we'll have a gilman's reagent preparation which we'll see in the subsequent reaction so this is not that we can take any active metal each metal will produce different kind of reaction so this wood's reaction is exclusively for sodium you cannot take any other metal fine that is second point and the third point of course this is a dimer and again it will be symmetric and again it will have even number of carbon you cannot have odd number of carbon as a product of wood's reaction so all those features will be true that was true for colby's electrolysis because both ultimately form product as in the last step through dimerization fine so this is wood's reaction and this is over now let's solve one problem using the three reaction we have done up till now this is a reaction from a to b and i have given you the reagent you have to identify yourself what would be the reaction suppose i give you this reaction and this is a conversion a b c d and e are compounds that you have to find on the merit of the reagent and somewhere the product which are given this is delta heat right 
um, this is a very short conversion. Later on, we'll be solving very long conversions from A to Z. Now, this is having only five unknowns, and these five unknowns have to be found out depending on the merit of whatever information has been provided to you. And the first thing is you must know what a tau lean is. If you don't know, you will not solve this problem. And I told you there are certain very common organic reagents, and you have to remember as they come come by your way. When you learn a new, if you, if you see a new organic name that you don't know the structure of, you must learn it there and then. That's the process of learning. You can't take the whole chart on the first day before starting the reaction and learn them and then start the reaction. That's not possible. It's a whole learning process. Like you see toluene, if you don't know the structure, learn it. If you see naphthalene, if you don't know the structure, learn it. Right? That's the way it goes. If you see xylene, if you don't know the structure, learn it. Toluene, you must be knowing it's very common. I have told you before as well. This is toluene, the methyl sitting at the top of benzene. Toluene has been given, and you have to find A, B, C, D, E. Right? Now, I'll suggest you to, to, to recapitulate the reaction we have studied, and then memorize, and then regurgitate, and then try this problem. Now, I'll, uh, you, you note down this problem. You try it on yourself. I'll teach you a reaction or two more, and then we'll again discuss this problem. Because uh, now I, I, I sense that from E to Tauline, there's a reaction that I haven't taught formally, but there's nothing new. You can do it on yourself, depending upon the last reaction of Hood's reaction. But still, I feel the obligation to first teach, even if it, that is trivial, and then give you to solve this problem. But you can note it down yourself. You can, you can, you can try it out. If you cannot, f if you can find E, then you can find rest of the thing. But from E to Tauline, there is a specific reaction which is very trivial and similar to Wood's reaction, but somehow I haven't taught. Then let me teach it first. The fourth reaction, it's very similar to Wood's reaction. It's called Wood's Fittig reaction. Right? Wood's Fittig reaction. It's just an extension of the concept of Wood's reaction. Now, if you remember in the Wood's reaction, in Wood's reaction we have Rx and sodium, right? That gives us RR. Very fine. Now suppose I have Rx in a system and I also have R dash X in the same system. And now I give sodium. Now in this case what will happen? Suppose one pair, this R dot, now this sodium will pump in the electron into the antibonding of this R and this R dash as well. As a result, there will be a formation of R dot and R dash dot both. Now, if R, this R dot dimerizes with another R dot, we will have a formation of RR. If this R dot dimerizes with this R dash dot, then we will have a formation of R R dash. If this R dash dimerizes with R dash, then we will have a formation of R dash R dash. So altogether there will be three kinds of products and the boiling point will be very close to each other. So the distillation process will be of no use. So the separation becomes very difficult. So when we have mixture of two this kind of alkyl halide, then uh, Wood's reaction produces multiple products and multiple products are never preferred. And very, very especially when all are hydrocarbon or all are having same functional group, so that distillation will not help.